this episode brought to you by Gamakatsu Hooks, the sharpest around. Outer Outdoors, tougher, stronger, smarter. And by Beaver Dam Tip Ups, heritage in ice fishing. What's up, guys? Clay from Wisconsin Angling Outdoors here today. And uh, today I'm basically going to bring you a little bit different video that, uh, you know, I, I don't see a lot of guys doing. And here in Wisconsin, obviously, we get ice in the wintertime, and I am an avid ice angler. Um, I'm mostly a tip-up fisherman, though. I like targeting big game fish on tip-ups and uh, with automatic fishermen as well. But I'm just going to give you my tip-up arsenal. Um, I got six beaver dams. They're all set up differently. Three of them are very similar, and the other three are also very similar. But I got a little tip-up caddy here, and I'm just going to pull them out one at a time and show them to you. So the first one is a new one for this season. I got it from Cabela's. Uh, this is a beaver dam. Jolly Roger edition. It has the all black board with the little pirate logo there and then there's obviously the, the pirate flag. I like these because one, not a lot of people have the black flag or the black flag with a pirate on it. So that's, uh, that's just a little something different and you know when you have a flag when this one goes up because none of my buddies have this one. So uh, I really really like this one. But on this I got a I got some 30 pound Dacron braided ice fishing line and then I got about 5 foot of 14 pound Sunlight Sniper as a, uh, as a fluorocarbon leader and I really really like this because even this tip up works really well um, for largemouth especially but it's one of those tip ups where you set, if you set one just below the ice this works very very well because of this long fluorocarbon leader. If fish can't see anything, they just grab that mineral, they hold on, and that 14 pound fluorocarbon is perfect for this. Um, you know, no, no stretch, you know, little to no stretch in the fluorocarbon. Adds, uh, it kind of helps that braid out, and uh, you really get good hook sets with this one. You, you know, the only real time you have to be careful is when you get them right up to the hole. You just got to be careful so you're not banging the fish on the ice and getting next in your line but I start off with about a five foot fluorocarbon leader and uh, you know I usually end up taking about a foot off every time or just retying a new one on before a derby or whatever because we do do a lot of ice derbies down here um, southeastern Wisconsin I do fish a lot of derbies so that's my first one made in the USA sticker still on there I'm gonna keep that on there that's the first Jolly Roger um, the next one is also a Beaver Dam, Jolly Roger, the blackboard, same thing, got the same flag. This one also has about a three foot fluorocarbon leader on it, um, a number, I believe that's a number four, um, Gamagatsu round bend treble hook, red is my color of choice, don't know why, just like the red trebles for uh, tip of fishing really. Um, this one caught me a lot of fish on Saturday. We had a really good day out on uh, George Lake here in Wisconsin, and I had a really, really good day. Caught a lot of fish. I think I had eight or nine flags on this tip up through from uh, from about eight in the morning till two in the afternoon. So it did really, really good on this tip up. A lot of action. Uh, I actually didn't have a missed a fish on this one yet, so this is my this is my good luck tip up. And to round off that that portion of the, the flags. I have another one of these beaver dams, same thing, it's the Jolly Roger uh, red hook. This one has about another four foot leader with a single split shot, really, really like that. Really, really, really like these tip ups, I mean they're just, they're cool looking, you know, they're kind of one of a kind, I guess, you know, they're they're a production model obviously, but not a lot of guys have these now, my name is get to order them offline, a lot of guys are just store shoppers around here, so. None of my buddies have these really easy to identify my tip-ups in a derby or whatever. I don't use tip-up markers because those are just, I think those are kind of silly putting a cone by your tip-up. But um, Here's the next one. I had this one last season, caught quite a few fish on it. Um, I turned this one into a pike one. I bought this flag from the Amish barn tackle shop. This is a Jolly Roger flag. Stuck it in this board. It's just had a black flag on it before. But this is kind of a, a cool board. It's it's black but it's mixed in with the wood trim it almost looks like it's just like uh, stained black wood and then they put the varnish over it obviously to you know make it last 
And then uh, this one is, this is one of my pike tip-ups for when I go up north or to on Alaska on the river targeting mostly northerns or if I know I'm going to be targeting mostly northerns during the day. Um, basically same thing, I, use, I run that 30 pound Dacron line but then right on this one I have about, on this one I have a two footer but this is a two foot leader of 45 pound not too kinky tieable steel leader line. It's actually titanium leader line and then I go to a 70 pound sprawl barrel swivel and then from the barrel swivel to my Dacron and on this one I have the split shot off of the not too kinky and just above the barrel swivel. But this one's kind of a deeper tip up um, when you're setting just above the weeds and three four feet of water and you'll notice this this not too kinky stuff is really nice. I can take this and you know this is a steel leader. You could never do this with any other steel leader. You know you could bend it over and twist it and it, it's straight as an arrow when you're done with it and it really gives this middle a lot of free action. This middle can really work below this swivel if you're you know running over grass this thing can really struggle um, especially the way that <laughs> we set up our minnows when you put them right before you hook them you either take your teeth or you take a knife and you lay them on the ice or against the board I really don't like doing that but you put them on the ice and you <clears throat> take your knife and you cut their tail off now when I say cut the tail off I don't mean go into the meat of the minnow you take the basically the back fin right where it meets the meat you just leave them a little bit of tail and you cut it off and uh, that, that basically forces that shiner or roach or fathead or whatever you're using suckers that forces that thing to it has to move to keep itself upright it, it, no it can't swim off the hook anymore so just to keep itself upright and to keep itself from dying it's it's got to constantly be moving so on this rig it, it works really good because it, they may they swim in a little circle and it uh definitely presents the, the fish with more action. That's one of my uh, pike setups. And we'll just put this back on here. I really like how the beaver dam's got the little rubber hook keeper on there once. It's not too kinky. You can just draw it down. Up time. There we go. You just get above your hole in your spool, and then you just keep everything. I like keeping everything nice and tight so it don't tangle. Next one, this is a uh, back from my days with HT. I, I basically custom kind of just rig this one up, but this is an HT. This was a I, I don't even know Husky. They called it. HT Husky tip up. I this was back when I I made my own, but I painted this one black. Um, painted this tip up black. Got a Beaver Dam black flag, and I put a wood doll in here so I could rig up the the cool black flag on there. But uh, one thing I really did like about these tip ups is they were a little more innovative with their spool design. You know, the Beaver Dam hasn't changed in a long time. This one's got the your line guide basically you know you can take your line out of there if you got a leader or whatever but these ones also have very very I think terrible you know securing systems on them you know the spools always moving up and down on you I'm not gonna tell you a product is shit because if it's not shit it, the, the spool design on this tip was absolutely atrocious you, you know the only cool thing about it really was you know you got this handle on this one you got this handle for spooling it up when you're done with the day it makes things a little bit easier and then you know you got the freedom of taking it out of the islet there but if this one was also kind of a bass tip because it was very sensitive it's got a really really short trigger arm so you just barely 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 had to pull on that thing to get a flag so this is kind of a, a large mouth tip up or a walleye tip up but I really you know this is just one of my backups uh, I also have some not too kinky on here. So that's about it for this one. This one really doesn't, you know, hit any cool highlights in my book. It's not, a, it's no beaver dam for sure. It's just a regular old rig. And then for the last one, bought another one of these at the Amish barn. This was one I bought last year. You may see these in Gander Mountain. I believe that's where I got this tip up. 
Um, this is the Blaze Orange board. Uh, the 2015 the Blaze Orange board. And this one is basically my... Well, I, this, this tip-up's got a story behind it. I have a bunch of old Beaver Dams. I probably have 30 old Beaver Dam tip-ups. The original ones. Um, my dad was you know, big into fishing with Schmelt and stuff back when he was a kid and not a lot of his buddies had tip ups so he picked up a bunch of them that he could at yard sales, whatever. So basically I have a bone yard in my basement of beaver dam parts. So last year on Lake Shangri-La, a week before that derby, uh, I was out there fishing, just kind of scoping out spots, scouting a little bit, and I had a really nice pike on. Got a little too excited, I picked the, I picked the flag up and I threw the tip up like an idiot basically I threw this board and the spool it landed on the old the you know the spool that came with it cracked it off and then the spool was junk and I had to use a, a windlass tip up for the rest of the day but uh, this is an original beaver dam tip up spool not a speck of rust on it works awesome you know it, it it's the original beaver dam spool thing works great really really love it on this one, I've got uh, I've got 20 pound um, braided Dacron from HT. Uh, it's the there's their uh, ice braid's a little bit different. It's a little thinner, but as you can see, the sensitivity on this spool is just absolutely awesome. Um, I've got again, I've got for pike. I use bigger roaches stuff, so I have the number four Gamakatsu round men treble with this again with the 75 pound spro barrel swivel tied to your main line. This is this is a really nice pike rig, especially for uh, early and late ice, when those pike are you know they're hunting really really close to the surface, um, getting ready to spawn. So I you know this is one of the ones where you can just set it. I can literally set that thing a foot underneath the ice, or if you raise your spool up, which you can on the old beaver dams, but <coughs> basically you can set her up like that, and uh, you can fish right underneath the ice. Now I'll just kind of show you next a couple things that I keep in this little caddy that I got that anybody can get from Amazon, which is kind of cool. Um, let me get this thing strung back up. The only thing I don't basically have from Beaver Dam is their little tip up winder, but I have the original ones. I have the plastic ones, the cool ones that they made, so I really, really like those. Just set this around the base of the flag. Again, just tighten up your spool. String her back. And just far enough to stop it. So I get my spool stuck in there. And there you go. Now your flag tip is all folded down. Well, the next things that uh, I think are actually crucial to getting bites in gin clear water on sunny days. You know, hole covers, a gander mound, five bucks. You know, just a piece of foam that you open up and you stick your tip up in there. And then I got this thing. This is like a tip up caddy. You can get it off of Amazon for like 25 bucks. All wood. You just got to put it together. Put these little bungees on here so your flags don't fall off and you got them on the four wheeler. But I keep my line markers and stuff in here and I always keep my lights in the bottom. Um, sometimes I tie up extra leaders and just keep them on there. So also keep my uh, four card in there so I can make extra leaders if I break off or whatever. But that's all for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is my tip up arsenal. Um, I'm gonna start getting ice fishing. Um, if you guys go on any derbies, just put in the comments and uh, maybe we'll you know maybe fish together, or say hi, whatever. Um, You'll be seeing me out there on my Polaris Razor. My truck's kind of hard. My truck and trailer are really, really hard to miss. I got my, my F-150 and I got a big gray trailer uh, enclosed. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Sorry it was such a long video. Sorry it's been such a long time since I put a video up. But I have some ice footage that I'll be getting up next week. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Scott's Hanging Outdoors. I'm going to see you later.